What up, YouTube? This is Woody coming back with another video. I ain't done one of these in a while where I just ride around and uh, talk to you guys. Today, I wanted to make a video, a follow-up video to my reveal video. I want to make a video talking about what made me choose this bike over some of the other bikes that I was looking at and talking about getting. I had, uh, I had like a, a five bike list of of bikes that I was tossing around back and forth uh, uh which one I wanted to get and uh in this video I want to talk about why I chose this bike when it comes right down to it out of all the bikes that I've been looking at and that I've been interested in it came right down to this bike and the Indian Sport Chief and uh let's get this bike started up go for a ride and we'll talk about it YouTube so if you've been following my videos and watching my ride reviews you know there was a list of bikes that uh, that I, a small list of bikes that I was interested in for my next bike that was this bike right here the 2023 Harley Davidson Lowrider S with the 117 in it and the other bikes were the uh, Breakout, the new Breakout, 2023 Breakout, the uh, Fat Boy, uh, I was kind of interested in the Street Bob, and then the uh, Indian Sport Chief. And uh, when it came right down to it, it came down to being either this bike or the Sport Chief uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I did a test ride on the uh, Harley Davidson Breakout, and love the bike cool bike great looking bike but but after riding it and uh experiencing the lean angle uh i quickly was able to take that ride off my list as far as being interested in uh getting that bike because uh come from a sport bike and then getting on a bike that you can't lean on at all uh completely just turned me off on that bike so that it only took uh two turns to scrape the peg on that bike and uh and out and that was uh that took that right off my list um the other bike was one of the other bikes was street bomb and uh it is a awesome bike it's a very cool bike and it's so be so much a better bike now that it has the 114 in it but uh the suspension is what uh deterred me from that bike because it has uh the traditional front forks and after riding it uh this last time i rode it is i've rode it twice i rode it when it had the 107 in it and now i just uh recently did a ride review uh of the 2023 20, with the uh 114 in it and uh the suspension is what got me on that bike i noticed towards the end of my ride review on that bike that the front end just kind of bounces sometimes if you uh you're a little lazy shifting in the second it just goes into neutral anyways the 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 front suspension you it kind of has like a pogo feel to it when it's hitting bumps and stuff which made me uninterested in that bike quickly took me off of, took that off my list uh the other one the uh okay guy the other one the uh uh fat boy uh I, I'm a, a huge fan of that bike. I really do like that bike. 
Uh, I did a test ride a while back. It's probably a 2020 Fat Boy. I think I rode, and uh, um, I really do like the Fat Boy. It's a cool looking bike. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the big tires, the wide tires on it. It handled fine for me. I didn't have trouble turning in it, turning it in, and uh, and I didn't even have it. I never even uh, scraped the floorboard on it. Um, I'm sure I came close, but I never did scrape the floorboard on it. It turned in fine. It had good enough lean angle for what it is. But uh, at the end of the day, I want a bike that. I can customize and and turn and make my own bike out of you know what I mean like make it my own and uh, a fat boy you can per do the performance mods and all that stuff but at the end of the day uh, there isn't a lot of a whole lot you could do to the looks of it to make it look like your own so while I, I do love the fat boy and it's a great riding bike and comfortable and all that. I just, I wanted something that I could uh, modify more to get my own look out of it or whatever. Then, uh, what was the other one? Uh, talked about the breakout, talked about Street Bob, talked about the Fat Boy. Uh, the other one was the Sport Chief, and when it come right down to it, that's what the the two bikes I was kind of tossing around back and forth was that was this bike and and the Sport Chief, and the Sport Chief was an awesome bike. It wasn't even on my list really until uh, well until it came out. It just came out this year. And, uh, and I got to take it for a ride and everything. And it is super, super cool bike. Absolutely closest comparing bike to this bike. If you're gonna compare, I see people talking about the Sport Chief and the Lowrider ST, the Sport Chief and the Lowrider ST. Well, they're two different bikes. Uh, one is like a mini bagger, which would be the ST. And then the Super, the Sport Chief is not. It doesn't have bags on it. All it has is the quarter fairing, and that's it. And uh, so I don't know why people are comparing the two, but it evenly is matched up with this bike. Uh, the only difference is being uh, this, the Sport Chief having a little more options, and the price point is a little higher on the Sport Chief than this bike. Now, what it it's like a three thousand dollar difference between this bike and sport chief this one is 17 and some change the sport chief is 21 and some change so roughly right around three thousand dollars now what do you get for that extra three thousand dollars well you get a lot of tech and a bigger quarter fairing with uh, uh, a windscreen on it so you're going to get a little bit more wind protection off that bike versus this bike clearly because this is this little fairing isn't deterring anything at all uh, it's it's not deflecting the wind off me at all I feel all the way down uh, to the about the lower part of my chest uh, about the top of my stomach um, but those are the things that uh, may in the and then the tech in it it has uh, a touch screen full touch screen it has rider modes it's got three different rider modes it's got gps navigation it's got uh bluetooth capability and uh and customizable dash like you can make the gauge you can kind of change the gauges and to whatever you kind of want it to look like uh when it's running um and those do add up to being they do make it worth the three thousand extra dollars you pay for that bike versus this bike definitely definitely worth it i mean i think i think just adding the navigation and uh the touch screen makes it worth the extra three thousand dollars that you pay for that bike versus this bike now reasons 
There was a couple things on that bike that I don't like and that I just couldn't get past. That kind of, I just couldn't get past them. I, I didn't like, the things I didn't like about it, they kind of, they're, they're mostly cosmetic, but it's just uh, things that bug me about the bike. If you've watched enough uh, ride reviews of that bike, uh, one of the things that really bugged me about that bike is that quarter fairing. Now, I like the quarter fairing. It looks awesome on the bike. It, it really does set that bike off and make it a good looking bike. Now, if you've watched any of the ride reviews and all the videos that have been made by different YouTubers of that bike, you once you see it, you can't not see it. And, and then, and you, like, for me, I noticed in the first video I watched that the the windscreen just shakes all the way down the road, all, just constantly shaking. And uh, once I noticed that, in every video I see of that bike, I just can't not see it. Like it get it grabs my attention, and I just can't can't uh, not see it shaking in the wind like that. It's kind of it drives me crazy. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's thin cheap plastic or or what the deal is with that fairing but it it shakes like crazy if you watch one of the videos you'll see it and then once you see it you can't unsee it like it gets your attention all the time um, now I'm sure there's things you could do to fix that maybe uh, to help take that shimmy out of it or something like that I don't know but that's just one of the things the other thing is the uh, control housings on that bike. On Indians in general, it seems like. If you look at this, they're nice and sleek around the buttons. They're not, they're, they're, they've got a nice shape to them and everything. They look nice in, uh, uh, I don't know how, what, how else to say. They look nice. They don't look cheap and, and huge. <laughs> On the Sport Chief, they look humongous. They look absolutely humongous. They make the buttons on them look tiny. Like the housing, I know it seems kind of dumb, but the housing on it looks so huge and dumb and cheap that uh, I just couldn't get past. That's another thing that I just can't get past. Like you're paying a premium for that bike and uh, it looks like they they cheaped out on the um, the how the controls and the housing on them uh, and then uh, those are the two biggest things like I said they're they're just cosmetic but like the, the control housings in that like I don't know how you, there's no way to fix that they are what they are and they're gonna always be what they are you know what I mean like you ain't changing those you ain't gonna make them look better uh, in any way but um, there's some stuff on, and then there's stuff on there that I just don't need uh, rider modes rider modes for a seasoned rider like they just see they they don't interest me as a seasoned rider I don't need rider modes I feel like at some point they become a gimmick more than anything the only reason I could see uh, rider modes being beneficial is for new riders and for riding in the rain once you're a seasoned rider once you're a seasoned rider, I can't see why you would ever use any of those modes at all, except for rain mode, and that would be in a torrential downpour. You would use uh, the rider mode, the rain mode. Like other than that, I mean, if it was just raining out and it wasn't that bad, I still wouldn't use rider mode, cause like. I've never had a bike that had modes and I done fine in the rain and I've rode in like torrential downpour like you couldn't hardly I couldn't hardly see through my f visor like it was pouring so hard so like but in a situation like that 
That is the only reason for a, a season rider that I could see them wanting to use rider modes. Outside of that, like I would think you would always have it in the the highest mode, the one that gives you all the performance and everything, and then you would just leave it there forever. Like I can't see why you would want to lower the power on your bike if you're a seasoned rider. And then like a beginning beginning rider, beginner rider, I can understand them wanting a bike with rider modes. Like if I was going out and I was learning how to ride a bike, I was brand new to riding, I would not, I would surpass the small CC motorcycles. I wouldn't look at a 300, a 400, a 500. I wouldn't look at any of those. I would go get the bike I wanted that had rider modes on it and then learn the bike through the rider modes ride it in rain mode starting out get used to learning the fundamentals getting used to the bike itself and then bump yourself up to standard mode and then bump yourself up to sport mode or whatever the highest mode is on the bike and, and go from there save yourself some money and, and, and not waste money on a starter bike get a bike with rider modes that's where rider modes make sense to me outside of that that's not something that's gonna cause me to want to buy a specific bike because it ha it's not a selling point to me rider modes are not a selling point to me okay and turn it on in front of me before I even turn my turn signal on. So, rider modes didn't matter to me, so that's just, that's not something that's gonna draw me in to buy a bike. So, at the end of the day, this bike is the one I chose because I've been wanting this bike ever since it came out, they came out with the M8 Lowrider S and the Softail platform. I've been wanting this bike then they, when they corrected the things that needed corrected on this bike last year, when they, when they moved the uh, gauges off of the Mohawk and put them up on the dash or on the bars, and then they uh, moved up to the 117, I was sold on the bike after that. And now this year, uh, having cruise control come standard, it was a no-brainer. This was the bike I was going to get. It was a no-brainer. Now, I'm not trying to like crap on the Sport Chief because it is an excellent bike. I really like that bike. Uh, I would, I know, I would be completely happy with that bike and uh, and everything. But there's just a couple things, those couple things about it that just kind of bug me about it. Where the fit and finish just isn't as good on some of the Indians as it is on these Harleys. Like, Harleys been doing it for a while, they know what they're doing. The other part, a couple other reasons that swayed me towards this bike versus the Indian was, like, the aftermarket is so much better in the Harley, on the Harley brand than in the uh, Indian brand. It just is because there's more Harleys out there. It's a bigger market, so there's more there's more companies making parts and performance parts and uh, and uh, bags and fairings and all kinds of stuff. There's so many companies and so many options out there for the Harley Davidson platform that isn't there for the Indian. It just isn't like. Which was a huge, is one of the biggest reasons, besides the fact that I've just been loving this bike since it came out. The aftermarket is what really sold me on this bike, because I want to be able to do whatever I want to this bike and make it my own. And, uh, and the ability to do that in the Indian is just not there. The bike's only been out, this is, this is its first year out. Uh, 
and then and the and um the indian brand overall there just isn't the aftermarket like there is with harley i want to be able to throw the performance mods at this bike and squeeze as much horsepower out, out of it as i can and i want to be able to do well anything i want to it to make it look like my own bike and a little different than everybody else's and, and at the end of the day it's just not there for indian let's get down a gear so we can hammer through here i like riding out here Anyways, those are my excuses why I chose this over the uh, Indian Sport Chief. I might as well just uh, title the video Indian Sport Chief versus Harley Lowrider S because that's basically what it came down to. At the end of the day, those were my the two bikes I was settled on, which one I was going to get, and, uh, and this is the one I chose. Uh, but I think this is going to be the end of the video here. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinions on, uh, on some of the stuff I talked about. What do you think about my decision? Do you think I made the right decision? Do you think I made the wrong decision? Uh, am I wrong about the Indian brand as a whole missing out on an aftermarket that Harley Davidson already has? Um, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you didn't like the video, hit that dislike button. If you ain't subscribed, please subscribe today. And I'll catch you on the next video. This is Woody. Peace and I'm out. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright. It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.